What's up everyone, welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. So today we are not at the Durbin Compound, we're over here at Aaron's house. Um, he had invited me out to his new home, he wanted me to come look at some things and uh, come help him work on some little tidbit stuff. So today's video is gonna be all about um, how to do a home inspection, um, just to uh, kind of do one on your own and don't rely on the inspector that you pay money for or that the realtor picks out for you. So if you're interested in our video, Stay tuned. All right, guys, so what I want to do first and foremost is go over some of the things that um, you might be looking for, uh, you want to keep an eye out for when you're walking around the house with the realtor. So um, you can, uh, you know, go around the house by yourself. Uh, don't always look at that. Uh, that kind of flashiness or the way that they stage the house. You don't want to, uh, you know, get fooled by some of the things that people put in a house to cover up some of the bad things that might have happened with the house, yeah. right? So Aaron just purchased this home. Um, it's got quite a few things that are, are you know, some, some red flags. Um, but, you know, Aaron is a do-it-yourselfer and he knows that he can fix these things. But for some people out there, if you're looking at a home, it might be a no-go for you. So uh, it's one of those things where you have to come up with that, that fine line between is it something that you want to fix? Is it something that you want to try to get the value of the house to come down for the sale price? Or is it something that you just want to stay away from altogether? So we're going to go around the house here. I'm going to show you a couple things that I like to look for on the outside of houses um, to make sure that you're making a good buy and that you won't get bit on um, shortly after moving in, right? Right. Okay. You got anything else to say before we start? No. Okay, cool. Let's uh, spin the camera around. We'll go, we'll probably cut in a couple different angles, um, a couple different places, and we'll talk about some things, and we'll roll it into one big video. So uh, let's get going. All right. So Aaron ha has, uh, you know, invited me to his home to uh, kind of nitpick some things. Uh, if you look on uh, the first thing I look for on the exterior of a house is is the condition of the roof. Um, Aaron's roof is in great shape. So I don't know exactly how old this roof is. Um, you can always look on the MLS to see exactly how old the roof is, but there's no curling on the tabs of the shingles, um, no horrible staining. It looks like this, is, this roof's gonna uh, give them another good 10 years. So another thing here, we're looking at a wood siding. Um, so you definitely want to go up close and you know, inspect for rot. Uh, you definitely want to get it inspected for wood destroying insects like termites, things like that before moving in. All right, guys, so we're over here looking at the brick uh, veneer here on the side. Uh, this is something that you might want to look at uh, when you're looking at a, a, a nice house. Uh, don't, don't always uh, say, you know, brick, some people say, you know, it'll last 100 years or so and so, but you definitely want to look at your uh, tuck pointing and make sure that you know, your mortar is, is good to go. You can see some spots that, that need attention or, or, you know, you can quickly figure that out. Um, Aaron's house looks pretty good. You can see uh, at one point here at the top line, somebody went ahead and uh, re-tuck pointed that. Um, in there and it looks a lot newer than the rest of it. But for the most part, this looks pretty good. Um, this is something that I would seal in the future. So if you're looking for maintenance type things, um, it's something that you probably wanna put some sealer on to, uh, to keep that brick from you know uh, degrading anymore over time. But overall, the exterior of the house looks really, really good. Um, the soffits look great. Uh, you can tell some areas bad with the with the flashing up here, but nothing nothing that's killer that's not going to, you know, it looks like as if somebody had squashed it by sitting on it or putting a ladder up on it and squashed it down when they sat on it. Not really a game changer at all, but you know, some things that are highlighted there. Aaron, you got any thoughts? No. All right, so we're gonna go around to the back of the house. Let's talk about the back of the house. All right guys, so we're back here on the back of the house here. Uh, just look at it, overall look around. Um, usually when you're looking at a house, it's probably not vacant. It probably has a lot of stuff in it. Um, they might have some stuff that, that hides features uh, that you, you might not see. So keep that in mind. Don't always uh, you know, get distracted by things. So uh, Aaron just told me the story about this new AC condenser. It's brand new. Um, turns out that it got replaced after the home inspection. 
So uh, we'll and go the into home inspector didn't find anything wrong with it. Okay. Was the... Right. So home inspector came in, didn't find anything wrong with the house, um, and then the unit upstairs, uh, which we'll talk about here in a few, uh, it it took a, it took a crap, and they had to buy a whole new one. Um, the seller actually paid for it, so awesome on Aaron's part. But just looking, make sure you're, uh, you know, you don't have anything crazy going on up here, railing missing, anything crazy. This is a brand new heat pump unit. Um, it's a little noisy since we're out here, but some, some things that you want to look at. Make sure your line sets are all insulated. Uh, you want to make sure your line set is insulated all the way to the manifold uh, just to keep down from any condensation or freezing up. Uh, this has some old insulation on it. They used the old line set that was in the house. They didn't replace it. Um, but something to keep an eye on. Make sure these don't freeze up. If these have ice around them, there is something wrong. You, you're low on refrigeration, so you just want to uh, take that into account that you might have to worry about, you know, uh, some issues in the future. Okay, nice new, nice new steps going up. Aaron, did you put those in? No. Okay, so brand new steps, uh, very they would, nice. They would look way better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go into the basement. All right, guys, so we're in here in the basement. Um, directly inside. So first things first, you want to look at the mechanicals. I know everybody is always looking at, uh, you know, all the light fixtures, the paint, the, you know, just how well everything looks. Oh, the carpet, the floors look awesome. But especially the mechanicals in the house, you definitely want to take uh, a better look at. So sorry about the lighting on this, but you're definitely going to get the point. Um, you know, you're looking at your plenum here uh, and then, oh, look, Aaron's helping us out. Um, I don't know exactly what the heck is going on here. Um, they kind of duct taped it slash twined it um, to, kind, to kind of insulate this. Maybe the previous owner had thought, hey, if I do this, it won't condensate, things like that. So this is absolutely something that you can easily fix. And, you know, Aaron didn't bat an eye at this because it's something that can be fixed with just a couple bucks. So not really a big thing. Uh, you know, you can go on any of these labels uh, there's a label on the furnace that will tell you the exact year of the model of the furnace. You can get a good idea of exactly how long you have to go on it. Uh, just give an overall look around on exactly what's going on. Um, old wiring, old lights, things like that. Uh, just be cognizant of things when you're walking around. Is it something that you can fix? Is it something that you need to hire someone to fix? Just always keep that in mind. So this is also in the basement here. We have a wood burner here that sits in the basement. Uh, you can see a problem area here where the chimney has been leaking. So uh, I assume that it's the rain cap on top of the chimney and water's leaking down into the bottom of the chimney and then it only has one way to come out and is right down here on the wall. This is something that can easily be cleaned up, painted over and you know put a new chimney cap on. Not something that's going to be um, detrimental but it's something that you want to check. Um, a good home inspector will check your flu and make sure it's clean. He'll take it apart. Uh, a lot of guys won't. Um, a lot of guys will just look around and literally, uh, yeah, that's about it. They're not really looking at anything. So, hey, Oliver, what's up? They're scarlet. All right, so we're being watched on this, this side of the of the uh, video. So here's a here's the area of concern. If you don't know anything about electrical, are you going to need an electrician to come in and figure out your box uh, and, and to set your box straight and put a new cover on? Or is this something that you can tackle yourself and just say, hey, you've got a couple issues around here. I really think that, um, you know, this should be taken care of and get some money off the sale price. What say you? Mm -hmm and Oliver was bugging me the whole time. All right guys, so when in a basement and you have cinder blocks, you usually don't have a problem with this around poured walls, but uh, if this foundation was in the ground, um, you would you would possibly have some staining in the corners uh, and, and see, the, see um, some moisture you know, seeping through the block. Since this is an exposed wall on the outside and is brick veneered, you don't really have to worry about this, but just be cognizant of some houses that are in the ground that the block may be an issue. Just keep your eye out. Now, while keeping your eye out, um, I noticed this here, um, this dryer vent, um, Aaron had, you know, said he saw this and it's really not that hard of a fix. So they have the dryer vent up here and it's got a long run from the dryer. 
Sorry about the light here. I'll try to stop that. But they've kind of pieced it together, duct taped it, and then made uh, quite the long run. So something that you definitely want to inspect before using it, um, clean it out from the previous owner, and otherwise fix this. So I hope you get the point on that. All right, guys, so another thing I was thinking about when we were coming up the hill is a lot of people don't think about drainage on a home. So, um, you know, it's kind of like driving, test driving a car. You always test drive a car during business hours at the dealership. You never get to see how the lights are when they, you know, it, when night comes, you don't ever get to see how bright the brights are. Right. You're always on a back road and you're like, man, this car that I just bought doesn't have headlights that are worth a crap. <laughs> so same thing goes with a home. Think about all of the things that you run into in your current house. Maybe you're coming from an apartment or you're coming from a condo. Um, you might not have some of these issues, but when you think about, you know, a heavy, heavy rain at your house, is your house in a, in a, in a low area and you have two sump pumps in the basement? Um, you know, is there, is the sump pump always running? If you're in the basement for a little while, like you are on a home tour, you can hear some of these things that are going on. How often is the sump pump running? It'll give you a great idea of how much groundwater there is, how much is not getting, uh, the house is not getting rid of, it's going underneath the foundation, all things to think about. Aaron really doesn't have this issue because he lives on a huge hill um, and it's really a big hill. I mean, it goes way down. Um, the elevation is probably, you can't even really tell on an elevation, but we're, you know, this is flat, flat here and you can see out to the trees. So it drops about, you know, 70, 80 feet. Mm -hmm. So he does not have a drainage issue, but a home that's on flat ground or in a low spot um, can have issues. So look at downspouts, um, things that, you know, wet spots in the yard, spots where grass has grown greener than the others. These home inspectors aren't, they don't care about you. They're not going to, uh, you know, there, there are some good eggs out there. I got a good egg when uh, I bought my house. And I don't think uh, I did. So, so Aaron definitely did not get a good egg, but you still pay the $400 and he's, you know, a fly by night. So, you know, uh, uh, hats off to the guys that are doing it right out there for home inspections. There are those good people out there, but there's a lot of guys that are just ripping people off. So that's what this video is all about is to educate those homeowners, those uh, new homeowners or people that are looking at a house, educate them on what things to look for and, and, and don't get, you know, sidetracked with your wife really likes the floor. Yeah, and like that guy, you know, took our four or five hundred dollars, whatever it was, and he listed a handrail missing on the steps going down into the basement, and a uh, the the garage right here didn't have enough GFI outlets in it to meet the code. And those are the only things that he didn't. He he listed the handrail going into the basement, the GFI, the lack of GFIs in the garage, right. and then. Uh, um, because the garage is attached to the house, it didn't have the right carbon dioxide, excuse me, detector, dioxide or monoxide, whichever one it needs to be for gas fumes. Cause it's gotcha. connected carbon to the monoxide. Yeah. Yeah. He said that it didn't have one of those and he didn't list that, but then, you know, there was all kinds of stuff after I got in, in here, all minor to me, all minor things. Like the light switch in the garage. Like the here. white switch quite light switch covers missing right a short in the one switch yeah he, he listed a handrail missing going into the basement steps but the one on this gigantic back porch is about to fall off yeah <laughs> so he was kind of just like you know he was kind of just here to just do the thing and um you know that that's why i always recommend if you're gonna have a home inspection definitely be there with the person uh, while they're doing the home inspection so you can be like wait what about that you know, and that might be if a big I'm not issue. mistaken, I don't know if it's a, a West Virginia thing, but I don't think they wanted us here. Oh yeah, so he can just half-ass the whole thing. Excuse well, part yeah, of my French. Yeah, I, I, I don't quote me, but I don't think they wanted us here huh. when yeah. it was happening. Well, that sounds about right because he didn't write up anything that was absolutely, you know, wrong with things. So mm -hmm. um, let's go on back inside the house. Um, we did a little bit in the basement. Um, let's go. Let's go up and talk about the AC unit. Okay. All right, so another thing right inside the front door, we are right here at the front door. Um, right inside the front door, as soon as you walk in, we have a water stain here. Um, right, the, uh, a, uh, the, the bathroom, man, I'm stuck for words. 
the bathroom right above here, um, there's a stain here. So Aaron was able to uh, figure out, hey, we have a new stain coming in. And what had happened was the, uh, the trap on the sink, the little, basically the little flapper was taken out and they basically uh, took some packing tape and tried to cover up um, to try to kind of seal up the hole. So and that was also something that the inspector clearly didn't even open the bottom of the sink or he just right. taped up pipes, which is not cool. Right. So let's go up there and look at that. I'll show you that. Okay, so we're in here in the, in the, uh, the bathroom right above where we just were. Um, I went ahead and put a brand new uh, tailpiece in here for Aaron. It had the flapper tailpiece. We went ahead and put in a uh, push button uh, closer on the drain instead of the little flapper. So the little flapper was uh, taken out and then they literally tried to duct tape a piece or use some packing tape and literally tried to plug this hole that was leaking out. And you can see some of the remnants from the mess that that made. So just be cognizant of these kind of things. Open the doors on your little vanities, check everything. You should... All right, so here I'm gonna show, or Aaron is gonna show us exactly what was going on with the tub here. Uh, go ahead and explain it to us, Aaron. Um, so we had bought the place, we moved in, and the first night we stayed here, um, my wife was showering, she gets out, I come walking in here and there's like that much water in the floor all the way over to the carpet. So I figured out what had happened, they installed new doors to sell the place, and this track piece down here. It's made with an angle on it to pitch the water back into the bathtub. What they had done was they installed it backwards and it was facing out into the floor. So all the water was running down the door and out into the floor. Mm. So I had to take the doors out, this bottom track out, flip it around, screw it back down and make sure it was caulked right. Mm. Okay, so that little uh, that little track piece is something that you might not uh, even catch. You probably wouldn't until you used it. Right. So uh, the the thing I wanted to the, the uh, basically the point I wanted to make is uh, try everything. Flush the toilet. Uh, use the sink. Use the use the uh, you know the knobs on the shower. You can see if they leak. You can see if there's just little things. A good home inspector will go through and he will literally test every function. And he did not. And so um, that comes down to you know uh, making sure that all of the switches are working, all of them are hooked up. Exactly what does that do? What does that control? If it's good or not. So um, Aaron has two switches in the garage that are literally they have a short or there there's something wrong with them because. The light won't stay on. You literally have to, you have to kind of hit the sweet uh, spot. Hit that sweet spot in the switch, and it's on both sides. So we think it's a, one of the traveler wires, or the traveler wire, uh, in between the three-way that might be loose. So you just moving the switch around is, you know, allowing it to stay on. But little stuff like this in the track on the door, it's something that you might not catch, uh, you know. But just look, keep your eyes open. Don't get, you know. Don't uh, don't get distracted by, oh, those towels look really cute on the towel rack. Mm -hmm. Or let your wife do that stuff. Let your significant other worry about that. You look at the actual mechanicals, the bones of the house, right? It's got good bones. So, uh, you know, j just, just think about it that way. All right, guys, so we're out here. Uh, this is upstairs, um, second level of the house. Um, and on the second level... Third, what, third, whatever, if you consider the basement. Oh, I have three stories, Niels. I'm a, a big man on campus, right? So if you see right over my head here, um, the drywall is all uh, cracked here. So funny story, um, probably not a funny story for Aaron and his family, uh, because it's a pain in the butt that uh, they had to go through all of the pain and heartache. Well, there's an air conditioning unit uh, right above us, right here in the ceiling. And uh, it was basically, the insulation was not uh, done properly on the plenum, so it sweats and condensates uh, in the hot weather in the attic. And it was also, the condensate drain was plugged. And so it was overflowing and basically trashed their ceiling in a couple different rooms here 
on round the, two. Round two. So you're looking at a, uh, a uh, crack that has uh, happened after this complete area has been re-drywalled and redone uh, from the very first time when they actually got the problem fixed. So the point I wanted to make here is that they had the home inspection and then they had the problem with the air conditioning unit. So uh, the previous owners uh, just threw the money at it and got it fixed real quick. Well, that fix real quick uh, ended up with, uh, I think we can count about 10 callbacks with the HVAC contractor. So, you know, it, it can become a real headache. Now, uh, we've just finally fixed the problem here. Uh, this happened while I've been here over the weekend. And, um, you know, the, the, the ductwork was not properly insulated and it sweat in the hot weather and basically trashed the ceiling again. So you said third time this or second be, time? This will be the second time we'll, we've had to tear, torn, tear the ceiling out and re drive all it. Right. So just a pain in the butt for a new homeowner. Um, you know, not something that you, you know, most of you can't handle if you're watching the channel. Um, you're probably a do-it-yourselfer like me and Aaron and uh, not something you can't handle, but nonetheless, it's, it's, it's a pain in the butt to be dealing with this kind of thing when you just move in. So uh, maybe a lesson learned uh, that, you know, not all home inspections actually do anything. Um, this probably would have been uh, taken care of if the home inspector would have just popped his head in the attic. You know, he should do a head and shoulders uh, inspection in the attic, uh, look with a flashlight, make sure everything is, you know, on the up and up. And that's something that he could have easily seen a plenum not insulated. And, you know, if it was an old unit, it could have been questionable. I would have got up there as a home inspector and really looked at that unit. So uh, just something to think about there. You got anything else you want to say on that, Aaron? No. All right. I, did I nail it? Nailed it. All right. Cool. So um, let's go ahead and wrap this video up. Yeah. Okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, just be cognizant. Uh, you know, it, the house may have good bones. The mechanicals might be solid. Um, but there might be some glaring issues that you don't see because you're too excited about things that, you know, um, your wife is looking at, you might be looking at. Uh, maybe it has an awesome garage. Uh, just always keep your head on a swivel. Go through the property multiple times. Um, you know, just like we had mentioned in the beginning of the video, if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you can handle a lot of this stuff on your own, then it's not stuff that was really going to keep anyone from buying it, like Aaron. Not anything that's not really that big of a deal. We'll fix it in time. And uh, they'll make it their own home, and it'll be awesome at the end. So uh, just like my house, when I, when I bought the Durbin compound, there were some glaring issues, but not stuff that I couldn't fix on my own. So I've since put an air conditioner, a condenser in, uh, replace a coil, replace the roof. So there are tons of things that will happen with every home. They're just normal wear and tear. Uh, just keep your eye out, keep your head on a swivel, and good luck to you and your buying experience. So I hope you guys like the video. Hope you like seeing Aaron back on the channel. Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down, whatever you're into, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.